So the members of Yellow Card who are involved with the suit against Juice World or his estate now are torn, but not torn enough to stop from proceeding with that lawsuit, baby. Feelings fade, but money talks. Money, money, money. <laughs> And after that strange statement that was released a few days ago where they were said to be taking some time to digest the news that Juice World had tragically passed away after suffering a seizure in a Chicago airport, the suit is now back on and they are definitely proceeding with the case after giving them an extension, Juice World's camp, to respond in kind of the suit. And we now have a statement from the representatives of Yellow Card who have elaborated on basically why they're proceeding with the case, laying out their reasons for doing so. And before we get started, I just want to explain this situation as simply as possible because there are some people who seem to believe that Juice World legitimately just copy and pasted parts of Yellow Card's song and just totally ripped them off, which is not true. It's more complicated than that, and it's actually kind of controversial, the legal argument that they're making in terms of this copyright law case they're making. Their attorney is a prominent attorney who has won a previous case, which was also very controversial. Juice World at no time, at least from anything that I've seen, has said that he took inspiration from this song. They are just claiming that the structure of the song has so many similarities that it couldn't be possible that Juice World originated the way that he performs the song. They also make the argument that because Juice World has publicly displayed affection for artists like Fall Out Boy and Falling in Reverse, that it's likely that he could have heard the song before, although thus far we've seen no evidence that Juice World has ever publicly acknowledged admiring or listening to this song by Yellow Card. And so what you have here is a seemingly ambiguous claim that the band apparently feels so strongly about that they're willing to proceed even after Juice World's tragic passing, even though we have not seen any direct evidence yet that Juice World has ever acknowledged hearing this song, and it's certainly impossible now unless they have a video recording or a previous interview where he has said as much. And personally, when I hear this song, it doesn't sound like it's a ripoff to me, but rather, you have a guy that grew up listening to emo his entire life, so he takes certain cues and aesthetics and turns it into his own. These are the members listed in the suit. It's worth noting that not all of the people who were in the band at the time that they retired are involved in this suit, although it would be interesting to hear what they had to say about the merits of this suit and maybe the optics of them suing somebody who is no longer with us. Now let's talk about their attorney, Richard Bush, who is a very talented lawyer in his own right, but he has been involved in controversial cases in the past, notably the blurred line suit against Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams. It all started when the family of late singer Marvin Gaye filed a suit against Pharrell Williams, alleging that his song got to give it up sounded just like Pharrell's blurred lines. They ended up winning $7.3 million, which a judge later reduced to $5.3 million. But again, much like the yellow card case, the similarities were not directly copied. They weren't sampled. There weren't any riffs that were taken from the other song and made into a beat. It was merely the feel and aesthetic, which was super controversial because people have a hard time believing that you can actually copy a feel as opposed to an instrument recording from a song. A quote listed in the original suit said, the gay defendants are claiming ownership of an entire genre as opposed to a specific work. And even the appeals judges on that case were somewhat split on this, with circuit judge Jacqueline Wynn saying that the songs were different in melody, harmony, and rhythm, and that the decision strikes a devastating blow to the future of musicians and composers everywhere. The case was pretty much finalized in December of 2018, and here we are in December of 2019 with another landmark copyright case with the same attorney. Again, it seems that this could threaten the future of copyright holders everywhere. Much like you have people putting erroneous claims on five seconds of a video and then taking the royalties from the entire video. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And that's why Yellow Card seems off base filing a suit against a man who is deceased and putting his family and friends through even more grief. At the end of the day, this is a situation that's going to affect their legacy for years going forward, and I think that the evidence in the case that prevailed for the gay family is different in this case with Yellow Card. Mainly, you had Pharrell Williams in an interview talking about how he did take inspiration from the song. 
Here you don't have any footage of Juice World or the producer on the song or anyone on the label that is being sued talking in that manner. So I think there really is an uphill battle for Yellow Card to prove their case here, especially in front of a jury who's already going to be sympathetic to a person who is deceased. This doesn't look bad. And mind you, consider the fact that all of this damage to their reputation by filing this suit, by taking this action and receiving the criticism that they've gotten from fans all over the world, past fans of Yellow Card and certainly Juice World fans who are outraged by this, imagine all all of this could be for nothing. They could lose the case and walk away empty handed. Just imagine the optics of members of Juice World's family showing up to this case to defend their deceased relative. It just is, it couldn't be worse. For their part, the law firm representing the members of Yellow Card released a statement which read as follows. First of all, we were as shocked and saddened by Juice World's death as everyone else. It is a tragic loss to his family, his fans, and to the music world at large. And we understand why people may be confused about the decision to continue with this lawsuit. My clients are certainly torn about proceeding and understand the optics involved, but it is important to remember this lawsuit was filed before this tragic event and was filed because of all the defendants and there are two other writers and several music publishers and record labels profited off of what we believe was clear copying and infringement of Yellow Card's work. So while they are absolutely aware of how this may be perceived and truly have incredible mixed emotions, the question is whether it is fair that all of those many parties profited and will continue to profit off of what my clients believe strongly was their work. The firm also noted that the figure being thrown around as $15 million that they were requesting allegedly is not factually correct. They said, the members of Yellow Card involved in the suit are simply seeking what the law allows and what parties in their position have sought in similar cases which at this point is not determined. For his part, the family of Juice World have not commented on this case, most likely because they are still grieving. This case has a long way to go and we will follow it for you every step of the way, so stick with us at Rockfeed. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on all breaking news and updates related to the rock music world. Thanks so much for joining us today and we'll see you all very soon.